Hello everyone, welcome back to this new video, new week, new challenge, this time with new techniques that you will learn to extend your hacking capabilities. Without further ado, let's get started. All right, let's go to CTF all day and choose a room. Oh boy, we have a lot of rooms here with so many challenges, but let's choose CTF 08. And our challenge for today will be Gimini Pentest V1. Gimini Inc. has contacted you to perform a penetration testing on one of their internal systems. This system has a web application that is meant for employees to export their profile to a PDF, identify any vulnerabilities possible with the goal of completing of complete system compromise with root privilege. Sounds interesting. Let's save the party and start the game. Okay, we'll give it some time. And while waiting for that, it shouldn't take long, we will launch our terminal. Okay, I'm going to cd into my CTS folder and I already created a uh, directory called Gimini pen test. And let's go back. And indeed, we have our URL. And the first thing I always do, if you've been watching my previous videos, is port scanning. So we will start as usual with just the top 200 ports with verbose mode and let's see if we can find anything interesting here. All right, it's running. We already have two ports, 80 and 22. 80, uh, 22 for SSH and 80 for what might be HTTP. We don't know yet. Um, what I'd like to do is uh, perform a service scan, so dash SV. I should have done this in the first command, but hey. No problemo. And so now we have OpenSSH 7.4p1 running on Debian. So this might hint that this is a Linux box. These are observations that would be helpful later um, in case we find some vulnerability. And uh, port 80, uh, so it's Apache HTTPD with the exact version. Now you may wonder how does Nmap find this information. Well, um, it's simply just um, taking it from the uh, headers. So if we type HTTP CTF 08.rootme.org, um, we're going to curl using the, uh, let's, uh, let's use I for, I guess, just the headers. We want just the headers. And here, as you can see, we have server Apache 2425. That's the one here. We just have two ports. We want to extend our attack surface. So while we are poking around for the uh, already open ports, we will also perform a uh, full scan and we will redirect the output to scan file. Okay, let's give it a go and uh, start uh, hacking the uh, web application ctf08.rootme.org and uh, let's see okay straight away we have a directory listing vulnerability so we have the information about a subdirectory which is in this case test2 we don't need to do any uh, directory brute force and so we land on this is the internal web application designed for employees so this is the right application to go after allow them to export their details to pdf the web application is built and modified from the following open source project oh okay i think we are uh, up for some code review right away um, but let's just not navigate to that URL yet. So what do we have else here? So we have the home page, which uh, doesn't do anything. 
uh, contact here, if you see in the uh, bottom left corner, it says it points to mail to, and then we have an email address. And then here is what seems to be the Twitter account for Sek uh, Gimini. That's the author of the challenge. And uh, we have, what else? We have nothing else. These are all uh, pages that don't point to anything. But in the top right corner, we have login button. So if we click on it, we have a modal. And uh, if we give it like a dummy username and password and sign in, it says here username or password are wrong. But we are presented with a new logging form. And if you see up at the uh, address bar, it says here slash login.php. Okay, perfect. Um, I wonder if we could inject something in the logging form. Something like a single quote or maybe a single quote followed by a double quote to test for SQL injection and sign in. Okay, does it do anything? Let me verify if we are sending any uh, requests here. So let's go to network and uh, let's click on sign in. Yes, uh, we have, oh yeah, seems that uh, it worked, but uh, we have nothing like, we have the same error message, username and password were wrong, meaning this is not potentially vulnerable to uh, SQL injection. Um, instead of like doing this blindly, because the um, web application is heavily based on this uh, URL, well, we can give it uh, a try and just have a peek, sneak peek, and see uh, if we can spot something that could help us find a vulnerability. So I'm just going to fetch this page and uh, do some light code review. So we have the readme, do we have any default username or password like we've seen in the previous challenge? So it seems that in order to install it for the first time, you go to install.php and then uh, maybe you follow a um, set of instructions and then it stores the uh, information under ink slash settings.php. We have a folder called ink, so let's uh, go there. Okay, oh, oh, we have another directory listing vulnerability, but uh, we only have PHP files, so we have the init and sitting settings, which are nothing but um, the ones that we have here include, which contains init and settings, so yeah. But if we click on it, uh, I wonder if we have anything back, no. What about settings? Mm, we don't have anything either. All right, let's go back. Uh, what else do we have? Um, let's go back to the readme. Okay, so it stores the data in uh, settings, I guess, .php. Oh uh, yeah, it contains the database connection details, and then then you uh, you land on this uh, web page. Okay, so we recognize the home tab, but the others we don't have access to because obviously we're not um, connected. But uh, I can't help but notice that there's another button here called sign up, which doesn't exist here. Um, if we go back to the uh, home directory. As you can see here, we don't have the button submit, uh, sign up. So I wonder what is the feature responsible for that server side. We don't have the URL here, but uh, if we go back to the files and let's inspect those, uh, we have something called register.php. So. I wonder if we could like register an account. Maybe they've deleted the button, but they forgot about the uh, 
the file. Oh, nope. File not found. Okay. All right. So let's see if we can access any of those files which are presented here in the source code. So I'm just going to use curl. And by the way, it finished the scan and it seems that we only have these two parts, SSH and HTTP. So we are on the right track. We just reuse a previous command and then add those files. So we have contact.php. And so as you can see, we have 404, which means it doesn't exist. What about, uh, well, footer, I think we, we have access to and header. These are the just the headers and footers. The navigation bar, I guess, is the header and then the footer is this one. So nothing really interesting here. But uh, I'm interested in like the uh, index. Well, the, the index is the home page, but install.php is interesting. Do we have that file? Nope, that's a shame. What about uh, login? We already saw that we had access to it. Uh, log out, nope. What about mod? Nope. So we could automate this, but uh, since this is just uh, a dozen files, it doesn't matter. We're going to go through them real quick. Privacy, nope. Uh, profile. Nope. What about register? Oh, I, I think, oh my God. I think I forgot to uh, use the subfolder test too. Let's retry with install. Nope. Uh, login, we already know that it exists. Log out, yes. So the logout redirects to the uh, root directory. Okay, nothing interesting there. What about mod? No, 404, privacy. I suspect that would be just a static page, but it doesn't exist. So what about profile? Oh, okay, profile returns something. Uh, okay, it returns a page, but for now we're just going to enumerate those that uh, resolve. Register, no, we don't have access to it. What about user? User redirects to slash, I guess it's because we're not authenticated. What about users list? That would be interesting. Oh, bummer, no, doesn't exist. What about validate, finally? Okay, so we have access to validate and uh, what else? And profile, okay. And login, obviously. So I wonder what do we have under uh, profile? First of all, before going to like profile, let's, let's just go to the user interface in the browser and type them to see if we get anything. So profile, user doesn't exist or it was deleted. Yes, I guess that's because we're unauthenticated. And the second one was uh, user, no, validate, yeah. Validate. Oh, there's a new button here. Start exploring. Let's click on it. Doesn't seem to do anything, okay. Let's uh, inspect and see what do we have here. So it's just a button. Yeah, that doesn't do anything. If we just click on that button, we don't see any traffic. So yeah, it doesn't do anything. I guess it's a uh, rabbit hole or uh, something to throw us off. But we're hackers here. We understand how we attack, we follow a solid method methodology. We're not going to go into that track. Let's go back to home. So let's recap. We have access to a internal web application with the possibility to send um, logging 
uh, credentials to authenticate. And we have access to a bunch of files like profile. And uh, yeah, uh, that's just the only file we have access to. The other, the other one redirects to the root directory. In the next video, we're going to dig deeper into those files and try to understand them to find if we can um, break the perimeter and have an initial access on the system through that web application. So don't forget to subscribe and hit the ring bell so that you receive a notification once the video goes live. As always, stay curious, keep learning and go find some bugs.